Hey everyone, it's Swayb here, your friendly front-end engineer who likes to teach Angular and web development. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to Angular Signals. And we're going to build up a simple contacts application using Signals and the Angular Material components. Okay, so what are Signals? Now, Signals are a new reactive primitive introduced by the Angular team in version 16. It has been released uh, at this point as a developer preview. Uh, and a signal is basically a variable containing a value, but alongside the value, it also has a way to notify all of its consumers. So why have they been introduced and what benefits they'll bring? So signals have been introduced because Angular till now has been using zone.js, which is a third party library to implement change detection in its components. Zone.js has some performance problems in that change detection always occurs from top to bottom and the whole component tree has to be traversed again and again even if there is a small data change. Signals will ultimately lead to components which won't need zone.js for change detection because signals have reactivity built into them. Okay, so what are the three new reactive primitives that have been introduced? The first, as I said, is a signal. Now the signal is a basic building block of all of these changes. It holds a value, as I said, and it also holds a notifier which can notify any consumers who are referring to this value. So whenever a signal's value changes, all the places it's used are notified and only those places are notified. This is in effect the fine-grained reactivity that the Angular team has been talking about in their recent press talks. So what does a signal have? A signal has an initial value, then you can set a value on a signal and a signal value can also be read anywhere that you need. Okay, so the second primitive is the computed primitive. Now a computed is a read-only signal that means it cannot be changed explicitly. It is derived from other signals. A computer's value only changes if the signals that it depends on change. Okay. Uh, the third reactive primitive is an effect. Now effects should be used rarely, but they are basically functions which are run whenever the dependent signals are changed. So while computers contain a value derived from a signal, effects can do something whenever those values changes. So as with computed, effects are only executed when the specific signals it depends on are changed. Great, so now enough of this theory. Now best is to create something with these three reactive primitives so that we can see how it works out. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing I wanted to show you the app, the final app that we are going to build. Okay, this is our app in which we can add a new component like this. We can go back and we can delete a component like this. Okay, so this is our simple app that we are going to build and we can add by clicking on this button here. We are going to go to the add um, route. And we're going to, we can add our um, name, email and phone. And then we can go back or we can save. And then we can delete a, uh, a contact by clicking on its specific delete button. And it's going to delete and the contact is going to, length is going to update here. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing that we need to do is to create a new app. Now I have already created that app, but I'm just going to show you the command that I use, the CLI command. So I used ng new standalone and this has been introduced in the new angular version 16 CLI. So make sure to install that. So this is going to create a new app without any ng modules as you can see here. The next thing that we want to do when we create this app is to add an angular material to it because we want to use it for our UI. So we are going to do ng add angular material and this is going to automatically give you prompts from which you can install the uh, angular material library now the third thing uh, that i did was just to ease it in the development process is to go to tsconfig.json and add a little something called type roots in its compiler options and i'm going to specify the angular material uh, node modules uh, folder here this is going to help us in the process of importing the modules whenever we need them. It's great. So now that we have done this, let's start creating our app. So let's go in our app.component first of all. And in our app components, the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to add our toolbar. Now to add our toolbar, we are going to do include this mat toolbar module in our imports. And we are going to add this here. Great. We're going to give our title of the app, which is my contacts. And the next thing that we do, we're going to do is to give it some color. The color would be the primary color because we want to give it uh, the color blue, as you can see in the example. And then the next thing we want to do is to add the router outlet because we want to have two routes for this. The first would be the contacts list, which would be the main route. And the other would be the add route in which we can add a new contact. Okay, so but the router outlet gives us some uh, error here. That means it's not been included. So we are going to include the router mode. Okay, and now the error is gone. Great. So our um, uh, new components are going to be injected 
at this place great so now let's create those components first okay so to create our components we are going to do ng generate c and we are going to put all our components in a new folder called components the first one we are going to call as contacts list and uh, we are going to give some uh, parameters that we want to give like we are going to give it flat so that we don't have a special folder for it because we are using inline templates and inline styles so we don't need them and we are also going to do skip tests okay great the component has been created and we can see it in our components folder here the next component that we want is our add contact component great we have our add contact component is here as well and that's all we need at this point uh, the next thing that we want to do is to have a service which can contain our basic business functionality of, of adding the contacts and getting the contacts so we're going to create a new service NGGS and we're going to put it in our services folder we're going to call it the contacts server. all right and the second thing is our model so for the model we're going to add a new folder here we're going to call it models and we are going to add a new file called contact dot mod yes okay so let's start with the model first and uh, this model is going to contain our interface for the contact and this will be simple we have the name of our contact we have the email of our contact and we have the phone of our contact great uh, next now let's go to our service so we can add some basic things including our first signal to our app okay so to create the signal all we have to do is to name our variable here and we are going to do signal like this let's include this from angular core it's something new and then we can give it an initial value here okay so in this case the contacts would contain the contacts list or the list of our contacts that we want uh, to show on the contacts list so it is going to be an array and we can also give the type here if you want so we can give the type here of contacts import this from our model great okay so here the initial value we have given is an empty array but what we want is we have some initial data and let's copy that in now great so this is our data that we want to show in our contacts list at this point great so this is our first signal okay now that we have our contacts list we can now build up our contacts list ui so let's go to our contacts list ui but before that we should also add our roots so let's go our there's a roots file here in which we want to add our roots here so we are going to do, uh, we're going to add our initial path here, which will be uh, the empty string, which means that the home path or the base path, and we're going to do path matches full. And then the component for the component, we're going to give as the contacts list component. Okay. The next one would be our add path. So we're just going to do add here and then we component be the add contact. Great. So we have our two paths here. Okay. Let's test this out now just to see we're going to do ng serve open just going to reload this here and we can see that we have our uh, toolbar and we have our contacts list the initial uh, component working here okay just to uh, try it out we can also go and do slash add here and see that the add contact component also works great so let's continue now and then um, complete our contacts list component and its ui okay so let's start on this and here we are going to use the mat list module so let's import that here mat list module and in the mat list module we are going to first introduce the mat list here and inside of it we are going to give it mat list item now how many items should we have and that would depend on the the contacts that we have so let's include these contacts here so the first thing we need to do here is to declare the contacts here so that we can get that signal and uh, for that we are going to inject contact service and we are going to get its contacts secret and here we are going to um, ng for um, structural directive to get the contacts that we want to show so how do we access the signal now so we are going to access the signal using the function so signal is basically a function and you can just call that function to get its value okay and note that this is the same way that we can get its value anywhere so we, we are using this value to get it in the template uh, but we can use the same way to get it in our component code and we can also use it in the same way in our service as well so that's something really uh, good about the new signals implementation in Angular. great okay so we have the mat list item let's just test this mat list item uh, out a bit to see whether it uh, shows our values fine so we are going to do we're just going to show the contact name great so we can see the list and we can see our contact names see that's simple enough and let's uh, make it a bit more meaningful uh, so here what we're going to do is we are going to do an h2 and we are going to use a directive here which is the title mat list item title yes this one we're going to use this for the name and then we're going to use another directive which is item mat list item line yeah 
this one and we are going to show our email or if you want you can show the phone number as well yeah that's fine great now we have a good looking contacts list using signals in the next video we'll add the functionality to add a new contact through the same signal hope you like this introduction and i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching